I slammed the front door behind me, my hands trembling as I struggled with my keys. The house was quiet, but the silence felt heavy, filled with things we weren't saying. Scott's car wasn't in the driveway, and I knew exactly where he'd be. Not at work, like he told me this morning, but probably drowning his problems at Larry Ale's bar again. Damn it, Scott, I muttered, throwing my purse onto the kitchen counter. The answering machine was blinking, and I pressed play harder than I needed to. Miss Noah, this is Virginia from Midwest Insurance. I'm calling to follow up on the claim your husband filed last week regarding his termination, the message played. My stomach sank. Scott had promised he quit his job at the bank three weeks ago, saying he had issues with his boss. I had doubts then it was the third job he'd left in as many years, but I wanted to believe him. The machine beeped again. Janet, honey, it's your mother-in-law. I hope you're not working late again. Scott could really use your support right now. Call me back, dear. I deleted Diane's message angrily. Of course, she was on his side. In her eyes, Scott could do no wrong, and any of his problems were somehow my fault. The front door creaked open, and I braced myself. Scott stumbled in, reeking of whiskey and failure. Hey, babe, he slurred, trying to smile but failing miserably. You're home early. Cut the act, Scott, I snapped. I know you got fired. Why did you lie to me? His face fell, guilt showing in his red, tired eyes. I didn't want to disappoint you again. So, you thought lying was a better choice? I ran my hand through my hair, feeling the frustration rise. How are we supposed to trust each other if you can't even be honest about something like this? Scott collapsed onto the couch, his head in his hands. I'm sorry, Janet. I really messed up this time. This time, I said, my voice getting louder. Scott, this is becoming a habit. We can't keep living like this. He mumbled something about a missed deadline and an angry client. Same story, different day. I paced the living room, my mind racing. We need to make some changes, I said firmly. I can't keep being the only reliable income around here, and you need to. The phone rang, cutting me off. Scott jumped for it, clearly relieved by the distraction. Hello? Oh, hi, Mom, he said, giving me a look that begged for a break from the argument. I rolled my eyes and headed to the kitchen, needing a break. As I filled a glass of water, I could hear Scott's voice from the other room. Yeah, Janet's here. She found out about the job. Then, in a quieter tone, he added, No, I haven't told her that part yet. I froze, gripping the glass tightly. What else was he hiding? Mom, I don't think that's a good idea, Scott said, his voice low and urgent. Janet won't know, I know you're trying to help. But I stormed back into the living room. Won't what, Scott? What genius plan has your mother come up with now? Scott's eyes widened in panic. It's nothing. It's nothing, Mom. I have to go. He hung up quickly, avoiding my eyes. Scott, I said, my tone sharp. What aren't you telling me? He fidgeted with the phone cord, looking everywhere except at me. It's just Mom thought it might be good if she came to stay with us for a while, you know, to help out. The glass slipped from my hand, smashing on the hardwood floor. Water and broken glass scattered at my feet, a perfect image of how messed up our life had become. Your mother, I said slowly, wants to move in with us? Scott nodded miserably, just for a little while until I can get back on my feet. I stared at him, speechless. This was a nightmare. Diane, with her constant judgment and snide comments, living in our home? The very thought made my skin crawl. Janet, please, Scott begged. It won't be for long. We need the help, and we... I cut him off, my voice cold. There is no we in this decision, Scott. You and your mother don't get to decide how we handle your mistakes. I turned, carefully stepping over the broken glass. Clean this up, I said over my shoulder. I need some air. I grabbed my keys and headed for the door. Janet, wait. Scott called after me. Where are you going? I paused with my hand on the doorknob. To figure out how to fix the mess you've made of our lives, I replied without turning around. And Scott, don't wait up. The next morning, I stormed into my office, my head pounding from a night of tossing and turning. The last thing I needed was to deal with Diane's judgmental attitude on top of Scott's lies. 
but there was her number flashing on my phone as it rang over and over. Janet speaking, I answered stiffly, bracing myself. Janet, dear, Diane's sugary voice came through the line, dripping with fake concern. I hope I'm not disturbing your very important work. I clenched my teeth. What can I do for you, Diane? I'm worried about Scott, she sighed dramatically. He's been so down lately. I can't help but wonder if your career focus might be affecting him, Diane said. My grip on the phone tightened. Excuse me? Well, you know how men are, Diane continued, completely unaware of the anger building inside me. They need support, attention. Scott's always been sensitive. Maybe if you were home more, Diane, I cut her off, my voice low and controlled. Scott is a grown man. His job troubles are his own responsibility. But as his wife, as his wife, I interrupted, I've been supporting us financially for years while Scott jumps from job to job. Don't you dare suggest this is my fault. Diane gasped, clearly offended. I'm only trying to help, Janet. Someone needs to be there for Scott. And if you're too busy climbing the corporate ladder, stop right there, I snapped. My career isn't the problem. Scott's inability to keep a job is. And frankly, Diane, your constant babying isn't helping him. Well, I never, she huffed. If that's how you feel, maybe I should come stay with you too for a while. Scott clearly needs some support at home. A chill ran through me. That won't be necessary, I said firmly. Scott and I can manage our own problems. We'll see about that, Diane replied in a threatening tone before hanging up. I slammed the phone down, fuming. The nerve of that woman. After everything I'd done to keep us afloat, she had the audacity to blame me for Scott's failures. My phone buzzed with a text from Scott. Mom's worried about us. Maybe we should let her visit. I ignored it, throwing myself into my work, avoiding the mess waiting for me at home. The hours flew by as I drowned in spreadsheets and phone calls, anything to keep my mind off it. It was nearly 9 p.m. by the time I left the office. When I pulled into the driveway, I froze. Diane's car was parked in my usual spot. Inside, I found them in the kitchen, Scott nervously stirring a pot while Diane fussed over the table. What's going on? I asked, dropping my briefcase with a loud thud. Diane turned, beaming. Janet, darling, we were wondering when you'd grace us with your presence. I hope you don't mind I took the liberty of preparing dinner. You certainly took liberties, I muttered, glaring at Scott. He refused to look at me, suddenly fascinated with his cooking. Scott mentioned you two were having some difficulties, Diane said, her tone dripping with fake concern. I thought a nice family dinner might help ease the tension. I let out a bitter laugh. A family dinner? Is that what this is? Scott finally looked up. Please, Janet. Mom's just trying to help. Helps. I snapped. By ambushing me in my own home? by blaming me for your problems. Diane gasped. I would never. Save it. I cut her off. I heard enough this morning. You made it pretty clear how you feel about me and my career. Scott stepped in between us. Janet, that's not fair. Mom's here because she cares. Oh, she cares all right, I muttered under my breath. I shot back. She cares more about controlling our lives, about making me the bad guy in her little story. Now, now. Diane said, her voice syrupy sweet. I know you're under a lot of stress, but there's no need for dramatics. Why don't we all sit down and... No, I said firmly. I'm not doing this, not tonight. I turned to Scott. You invited her without even asking me, didn't you? His guilty look said it all. I grabbed my keys, my hands trembling with anger. Janet, wait. Scott called as I headed for the door. Where are you going? I paused my hand on the doorknob. Somewhere I'm actually wanted, I replied coldly. Enjoy your family dinner. I slammed the door behind me, and as I walked away, I heard Diane's voice drift out. Well, I never. Scott, darling, you really need to do something about that wife of yours. I got in my car and drove, tears blurring my vision. How had my life ended up like this? And more importantly, how was I going to fix it? The next day, after a long day at work, I pulled into the driveway, my stomach twisting at the sight of Diane's car still parked in the same spot. She had been here for a week. Taking a deep breath, 
I braced myself and went inside. The living room was a mess. Diane's belongings were scattered everywhere, suitcases overflowing with clothes, boxes stacked high, and framed pictures of her and Scott covering every surface. What the hell is going on? I demanded, my voice echoing through the house. Scott walked out of the kitchen, looking embarrassed. Janet, honey, I can explain. Scott invited me to stay for a while. Diane cut in, sweeping into the room with a smug smile. Isn't it wonderful? Now I can help around the house and give you more time to focus on your career. I felt the blood drain from my face. Stay? For how long? Scott shuffled his feet, avoiding my eyes. Well, you see, Mom's having some financial problems. I thought she could live with us until she gets back on her feet. Live with us? I repeated, my voice rising. Scott, we can barely support ourselves. How are we supposed to support your mother too? Diane clicked her tongue. Now, Janet, there's no need to be so dramatic. I'm sure if we tighten our belts, we can make it work. After all, family comes first. I spun around to face her. This isn't your decision, Diane. This is our home mine and Scott's. Of course, dear, she said, patronizingly. But Scott agrees it's for the best. Don't you, sweethearts? Scott nodded weakly, and something inside me snapped. How dare you? I hissed, stepping closer to him. How dare you make this decision without talking to me? This is my house too, Scott. My life. Please, Janet, Scott begged. Mom needs her help. We can't just turn our backs on her. Like you turned your back on your responsibilities? I shot back. I fired back. Or how about how you've turned your back on our marriage by lying to me? Diane gasped. Janet, that's no way to talk to your husband. I whirled around to face her. And you? You come waltzing in here, criticizing my choices, blaming me for Scott's failures, and now you expect me to support you. I'm only trying to help, Diane sniffed. Someone needs to hold this family together. We were doing just fine before you showed up. I snapped. Scott stepped between us. Janet, that's enough. Mom's staying and that's final. I stared at him, disbelief and betrayal flooding through me. Final? You don't get to make that decision on your own, Scott. Well, someone has to make decisions around here, he shot back. You're never home anyway. His words hit me like a punch to the gut. I stepped back, grabbing my purse. I'm never home because I'm working my butt off to keep us going while you hop from one job to the next. Janet, wait. Scott started, but I was already heading to the door. No, Scott. I'm done waiting. I'm done being the bad guy in all of this. I paused at the door, turning back to both of them. You want to play happy family with mommy, dearest? Fine. But don't expect me to stick around and watch. Where are you going? Scott called after me. To a hotel, I replied coldly. Since I'm apparently no longer welcome in my own home. As I got into my car, I heard Diane's voice drift out the open door. Let her go, Scott. She'll come to her senses, eventually. Now, why don't you help me unpack? I sped out of the driveway, tears blurring my vision. How had it come to this? My husband choosing his mother over me, my home invaded, my life flipped upside down. As I drove aimlessly through the dark streets, a cold determination settled inside me. If Scott and Diane wanted to play dirty, fine. Two could play at that game. It was time to start planning my next move and my revenge. I had been staying at the Comfort Inn for a week, trying to clear my mind and figure out my plan. The constant buzzing of my phone, with Scott's desperate texts and Diane's passive-aggressive voicemails, only strengthened my resolve. I needed to face this head-on. As I pulled into the driveway, I noticed Scott's car was gone. Perfect. I could grab some clothes without a confrontation. But as I stepped inside the house, I heard Diane's sharp voice coming from the kitchen. I don't care what it takes, Alex. You can't do this to me now. I froze, my hand still on the doorknob. Diane was clearly in the middle of a heated phone call, unaware of my presence. Don't you dare bring up my mistake, she hissed. You're the one who's been embezzling from the company for years. My eyes widened. What was going on? Fine, file for divorce, Diane spat. But don't think. I won't take you for everything you're worth, Alex. I know all your secrets, Diane said before abruptly ending the call. I heard her muffled sobs. 
For a brief moment, I felt a twinge of sympathy, but it vanished as soon as I heard her voice again, this time leaving a voicemail. Scott, honey, it's mom. Listen, I need you to talk to Janet about accessing some of your joint savings. It's just a small loan to get me through. I'm sure she'll understand we're family, after all. A surge of anger shot through me. How dare she? I stormed into the kitchen, causing Diane to jump. Janet, she gasped, quickly wiping her eyes. I didn't hear you come in. Clearly, I said coldly. Too busy plotting to take our savings, were you? Diane's face went pale. You heard that? Every word, I said, my voice steady, including your lovely conversation with Alex. Cheating on him and stealing money. Diane? My, my what would the neighbors say? You don't understand, Diane pleaded, her earlier confidence crumbling. Alex is trying to ruin me. I need help. I let out a bitter laugh. And your solution is to ruin us instead? To take our money while you've been living comfortably off stolen cash for years. It wasn't like that, Diane protested. Alex handled all the finances. I didn't know. Save it, I snapped. I'm not interested in your excuses. What I do want is for you to pack your things and get out of my house. Diane's eyes narrowed. You can't throw me out. Scott invited me to stay. Watch me, I growled, stepping closer. You've manipulated and lied to us since you got here. You blamed me for Scott's problems took over our home, and now you're trying to steal from us. I'm done. I am Scott's mother. Diane shrieked. He'll never choose you over me. Just then, the front door slammed, and Scott's voice rang out. Mom? Janet? What's going on? Diane's expression instantly changed, tears welling up at her eyes as Scott entered the kitchen. Oh, Scott, she wailed. Janet's being so cruel. She wants to throw me out on the street. Scott looked back and forth between us, confusion written all over his face. Janet, what's going on? Don't you dare fall for her act, I warned him. Your mother's been lying to both of us. She's getting divorced because she cheated on Alex, and she's been embezzling money for years. Now she wants to dip into our savings to cover her tracks. Scott's jaw dropped. Mom, is this true? Diane's sobs grew louder. Scott, please, you don't understand. I had no choice. I turned to Scott, my voice firm. It's time to decide, Scott. Either she goes or I do. For good this time. The tension in the room was thick as Scott looked between his tearful mother and me, standing firm. I could see the conflict in his eyes years of being manipulated by his mother now colliding with the harsh truth in front of him. Scott, I said, urging him to decide. I spoke softly but firmly. This is it, Scott. This is the moment that decides our future. Choose wisely. As Scott opened his mouth to speak, I held my breath, knowing that whatever he said next would change all our lives. His eyes flickered between Diane and me, his face full of confusion and pain. I need some time to think, he stammered, backing out of the kitchen. Scott, please. Diane cried, reaching for him, but he was already gone, the front door slamming behind him. I stood there, trembling with anger and hurt. I hope you're happy, Diane, I said, my voice sharp. You've torn this family apart. Diane's tear-streaked face hardened. You did that all by yourself, Janet. If you'd been a proper wife, don't you dare. I cut her off, my voice cold. I'm going upstairs to pack. When I come back down, I expect you to be gone. I stormed upstairs, my mind racing as I threw clothes into a suitcase. Then I heard her voice again, Diane, was on the phone. I quietly crept to the top of the stairs to listen. Alex, please, she was saying, her voice desperate. I need more time. No, don't call the lawyers yet. I have a plan. My blood ran cold. What was she up to now? Scott and Janet have savings, Diane continued. If I can just get access to them, no, they don't suspect anything. Janet's too busy with her career to notice. I gripped the banister, my knuckles turning white. She was planning to steal from us. Just give me a week, Diane pleaded. I'll get the money, and we can make this all go away. I'd heard enough. I marched downstairs, my face stormy. Diane jumped when she saw me, quickly ending her call. Janet, I... Save it, I snapped. I heard everything. 
You're not just asking to borrow money or planning to steal it. Diane's face crumpled. You don't understand. Alex will ruin me if I don't pay him off. I had no choice. There's always a choice, I said coldly. And you chose to lie, cheat, and steal. But it ends now. I pulled out my phone and dialed Scott. It went to voicemail. Scott, it's Janet. Your mother is planning to steal our savings to pay off Alex. Come home now. We need to talk. Diane lunged at me, trying to grab the phone. You can't do this, she shrieked. I dodged her, my voice rising. Watch me. It's over, Diane. Your lies, your manipulation. All of it. Just then, the front door opened. Scott walked in, his face pale. I heard everything, he said quietly. The voicemail came through while I was sitting in the car. Diane collapsed onto the couch, sobbing. Scott, sweetheart, please you don't understand. I understand perfectly, Scott interrupted, his voice firm. You've been lying to us, using us, and now you are going to steal from us. I felt a glimmer of hope was Scott finally seeing the truth, but then he turned to me, his eyes cold. And you, Janet, you've been so wrapped up in your job that you didn't even notice what was happening in our own home. My jaw dropped. Are you serious right now? I've been the one supporting us while you can't keep a job. I've been dealing with your mother's constant criticism and manipulation. Scott shook his head. Maybe if you'd been around more, none of this would have happened. I stared at him, disbelief and fury churning inside me. In that moment, I saw my future one where I would always be blamed, where I would never be enough, where I would sacrifice everything for a man who would always choose his mother over me. You know what? I said, my voice cold and calm. You're right, Scott. I haven't been around enough. So let me fix that right now. I grabbed my suitcase and headed for the door. Janet, wait. Where are you going? Scott called after me. I paused at the door, looking back at the two people who had betrayed me so deeply. I'm leaving, I said firmly. For good this time. You two deserve each other. As I walked out, I heard Diane smug whisper to Scott, it's for the best, darling. Now, about that savings account. I got into my car, my hands shaking as I gripped the steering wheel. This wasn't just about leaving anymore, it was about protecting myself and everything I had worked for. It was time to call a lawyer and start divorce proceedings. If Scott and Diane wanted to play dirty, I'd show them just how strong I could be. Three weeks later, I sat in my lawyer Nicole's office, going over the divorce papers for what felt like the hundredth time. I was determined to protect myself and my assets. Everything looks good, Janet, Nicole said. We've frozen the joint accounts, and Scott can't touch your personal savings. Are you ready to file? I took a deep breath, my hand hovering over the papers. This was at the point of no return. Just as I was about to sign, my phone buzzed. Diane's number flashed on the screen. Ignore it. Nicole advised, but something made me hesitate. I should at least hear what she has to say, I muttered, answering the call. Janet, Diane's voice was surprisingly small. Please don't hang up. I need to talk to you. I have nothing to say to you, Diane, I replied coldly. Please, she begged. I've made a terrible mistake. I need your help. Against my better judgment, I found myself listening as Diane spilled a story of deceit and desperation. Her voice cracked as she admitted to her affair, to the lies she had told Scott about me, and to her plan to use our money to cover up her husband's embezzlement. I never meant for her to go this far, Diane sobbed. I thought if I could just buy some time, fix things with Alex, but it's all fallen apart. He's filing for divorce, threatening to expose everything. I have nowhere else to turn. I felt a mix of emotions, anger, pity, and a strange sense of vindication. Why are you telling me this now, Diane? Because I realize now how wrong I was, she whispered. About everything about you. I need your help, Janet. Not just for me, but for Scott, too. My heart clenched at the mention of Scott's name. What about Scott? Her voice trembled. He's a mess, Janet. He finally sees the truth, but he doesn't know how to fix things. He misses you terribly. I closed my eyes, fighting back tears. It's too late for that, Diane. I'm in my lawyer's office right now, about to file for divorce. No. Diane cried. Please, Janet, give us a chance to make this right. I'll tell Scott everything, I swear. 
Just come home. Let's talk face to face. I looked at the divorce papers in front of me, then at Nicole, my lawyer, who was watching me with concern. I need to think about this, I said finally. Of course, Diane replied, a hint of hope in her voice. Take all the time you need. We'll be here. I ended the call, my mind spinning. Nicole leaned forward, her brow furrowed. Janet, whatever she said, remember why you're here. Don't let her manipulate you again. I nodded absently, but my resolve was weakening. What if Diane was telling the truth? What if this was my chance to finally get the whole story, to confront both her and Scott with all the facts? I need to go, I said suddenly, standing up. I'm sorry, Nicole. I just, I need to see this through. Nicole sighed but nodded. Be careful, Janet. And call me if you need anything. As I drove back to the house, was it still home? My emotions swirled. Part of me screamed that this was a trap, that Diane and Scott would never change. But another part, a small part one thought I had silenced, whispered of hope and second chances. I pulled into the driveway, my heart pounding. The house looked the same, but everything felt different. As I approached the front door, I saw Scott through the window, pacing anxiously. Our eyes met, and I saw a flicker of relief on his face. My hand trembled as I reached for the doorknob. This was at the moment of truth. Whatever happened next would change everything. I took a deep breath and opened the door, stepping into the unknown. I stepped into the house, and the air felt heavy with tension. Scott stood in the living room, his face a mix of relief and worry. Diane sat on the couch, nervously twisting her hands in her lap. Janet, Scott said, stepping toward me. I'm so glad you came. I raised my hand to stop him. I'm here to listen, nothing more. Diane, you said you had something to tell us both. So talk. Diane nodded, her eyes filling with tears. I've been lying to both of you about everything. For the next 30 minutes, Diane laid out her secrets her affair with a family friend, Alex's embezzlement from his company, their upcoming divorce, and her desperate plan to use our money to cover everything up. With each revelation, Scott's face grew paler, his hands clenching into fists. How could you, Mom? He whispered, his voice trembling. How could you lie to us like this? Diane sobbed and reached for Scott, but he pulled back. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I never meant for it to go this far. I thought I could fix everything before you found out. I stood there, feeling a storm of emotions anger at Diane's lies, pity for her desperation, and the growing realization that Scott had been just as much a victim of her manipulation as I had been. Scott, I said softly, turning to him, did you know any of this? He shook his head, looking shaken. No, I got Janet, I had no idea. I thought mom just needed our help. I never imagined. That's why I called you, Diane interrupted, her voice desperate. I see now how wrong I was about everything. I need your help, both of you, please. I let out a bitter laugh. Help? After everything you've done? You tried to steal from us, Diane. You almost ruined our marriage. I know, she wailed. And I'll spend the rest of my life making it up to you both. But right now, I need your help to fix this mess with Alex. If we don't act fast, he'll expose everything, and we'll all go down. Scott turned to me, his eyes full of desperation. Janet, what should we do? I felt the weight of the moment. This was at the decision that would shape the future of not just my marriage, but our whole family. No, I said firmly, surprising even myself with how strong my voice sounded. We're not doing this, Diane. Not anymore. But Diane started, but I cut her off. No more lies. No more schemes. You made this mess and you're going to face the consequences, just like the rest of us. I turned to Scott, my heart pounding, waiting for his response. I love you, Scott, but I can't keep living like this. We can't keep letting your mother behave this way, I said, my voice steady but sad. Scott nodded slowly, understanding finally sinking in. You're right. Mom, I'm sorry, but Janet's right. We can't help you cover this up. Diane's face crumpled. But what am I supposed to do? Where will I go? That's not our problem anymore, I said, feeling a huge weight lift off my shoulders. I turned to Scott. We need to talk alone. We left Diane sobbing on the couch and moved to the kitchen. 
The air between us was thick with unspoken feelings and hurt. Janet, Scott started, his voice full of emotion. I've been such a fool. Can you ever forgive me? I looked at him, really looked at him, for the first time in months. I saw the man I had once fallen in love with, but I also saw the son who had let his mother come between us. I don't know, Scott, I said honestly. I love you, but I don't know if love is enough anymore. We have a lot to work through. Scott nodded, tears in his eyes. I understand. Whatever it takes, Janet. I want to make this right. As we stood there in our kitchen, with the sound of Diane's sobs in the background, I realized this was just the beginning. We had a long and difficult journey ahead facing the consequences of Diane's actions, rebuilding trust, and figuring out if our marriage could survive this test. But for the first time in months, I felt a glimmer of hope. Whatever came next, I knew I had the strength to face it head on. Two years later, I stood in my new apartment, surrounded by moving boxes and the promise of a fresh start. The divorce had been finalized four months ago, and I was finally ready to close this chapter of my life. My phone buzzed with a message from my boss. Congratulations on the promotion, Janet. I can't wait to see what you'll do as our new marketing director. I smiled, feeling a surge of pride. This was what I had been working for recognition for my skills and hard work, not judgment for being ambitious. As I unpacked, I came across a photo of Scott and me from happier times. A wave of sadness hit me, but it quickly passed, replaced by a sense of peace. We had tried to make things work after Diane's confession, but the trust had been too deeply damaged. In the end, we both realized that sometimes love just isn't enough. The doorbell rang, pulling me from my thoughts. When I opened the door, I was surprised to see Diane standing there. She looked older and more worn down than I remembered. Janet, she said softly, I hope I'm not bothering you. I just wanted to apologize again and give you this. She handed me an envelope. Inside was a check for a large sum much more than she had tried to take from us. It's everything I have, Diane said, her voice trembling. I sold the house. My jewelry I want to make up for what I did to you and Scott, Diane said, her voice trembling. She handed me the check, and I stared at it, emotions swirling inside me. Diane, I began, but she cut me off. I know this won't fix anything, but I hope it helps you start your new life. I see that now, looking at this woman who had caused me so much pain, I realized my anger had faded. Thank you, Diane, but I don't need this. I've already started my new life. I handed the check back to her. Use it to start over for yourself. Learn from this and be better. Diane's eyes filled with tears. You're an incredible woman, Janet. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that sooner. After she left, I sat on my new couch, trying to process everything. My phone buzzed again, this time a text from Scott. Heard about your promotion. Congratulations, Janet. You always were the strong one. I smiled sadly and I typed back a simple thank you. As I hit send, it hit me this was truly the end of an era. Scott and Diane would always be part of my past, but they no longer had any hold over my future. I walked over to the window, gazing out at the city skyline. My new life stretched out in front of me, full of possibilities. No more compromising my dreams, no more dimming my light to make others feel comfortable. I was free to be myself completely and unapologetically. As the sun set, painting the sky in shades of orange and pink, I felt excitement building inside me. Tomorrow was a new day, the first of many, and I was ready to embrace it, stronger and wiser than before. I thought about all the women out there facing similar struggles torn between family obligations and their own ambitions, fighting to be valued and heard. I hoped my story would inspire them to stand up for themselves and demand the love and respect they deserved. At that moment, I made a promise to myself. I would use my new position not just to move my career forward, but to mentor other women, to help them find their voices and pursue their dreams. My journey had been hard, but it had taught me invaluable lessons about resilience, self-worth, and the power of staying true to who you are. As night fell, I raised a glass to my reflection in the window. Here's to new beginnings, I whispered. To strength, to growth, and to never settling for less than you deserve.
The future was bright, and for the first time in years, I felt truly, genuinely happy. Whatever challenges came my way, I knew I had the strength to face them. After all, I was Janet resilient, ambitious, and finally, gloriously free.